quick, so quick intro. So Sushi Sulaiman is an artist from Malaysia. She has done it has been she is very prolific and done very interesting works in Malaysia too, works that have a lot of research involved um, in looking at the histories, um, the land, uh, the peoples, the communities, the knowledges in Malaysia. So, thank you everyone for coming here to listen to my conversation with June. Um, basically, the work for Singapore Biennale, uh, I titled the work Kancil Mengadap Beringin. English? What is the English? I cannot remember. Facing the banyan tree. Deer facing the banyan tree. Uh, mouse deer, mouse deer, kancil. Um, actually, very interestingly, um, because I will talk about the journey of the banyan. Because uh, throughout my career, I've been longing to manifest something that very Tenggara, very Southeast Asia. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know what it means to other people, but the Tenggara that I want to translate or to interpret to others, especially as a visual artist. <clears throat> Basically, I learned about Tenggara from my late father, uh, a lot to do with petanda, like the alignment of the sign. So this particular, when I interested to deal with banyan tree, I know that a lot of things I can plan, but somehow the banyan plan for me. So, so something, something like that. Uh, I aware, of course, um, as artists, uh, I will make some plans with ideas, but the best part is to wait sometimes with a certain signal or certain sign. This is what I feel that I want to observe and I want to experience the essence of Tenggara, the Southeast Asia or whatever, whoever wants to call it. <clears throat> Because throughout my career, I think, especially in Europe, it's very difficult for me to somehow explain about certain things the Southeast Asia way. For example, when I did Documenta, it's about the intention experiment. So a lot of the feedback after Documenta, they said that I'm kind of like psycho analyst kind of person that when I did the, the performance, two of person who participated went out, cried. Don't know what happened to them. They said that I tried to open up something that reactivate something. <clears throat> so this is the thing that I think that me, myself, I want to observe. So Banyan Tree, somehow in this Sundaland kind of kingdom, long time ago, it's a tree that has a, a certain special uh, relationship with the cosmos energy. So, happened, okay, the story about this banyan tree, one very fine day in 2015, June came, I was a resident artist in CCA, so June came just for I think open studio, open studio, open studio. Yeah, I, I met June before for Mata Hati project. Then I met her again. So, June, how to go to here? Okay, this is June in 2015. Very long hair, very, very hippie, you know, that kind of. So, then June approached me. June said, hey, I got this uh, banyan tree uh, in my house already like trying to really make their own uh, her own life you see like growing and growing growing so in a pot maybe it's a bit intense to watch banyan tree so she give an idea that why don't you adopt this banyan tree because i adopt from substation right you mentioned to me so i said huh that's very interesting because at this time um I was also in my mind planning to purchase a, a land with some friends. 
I, I, I want to start something like, because if you want to know uh, the essence of this area, you need to really be part of a forest, for example, because everything derived from forest kind of mythology system and everything. So it's very interesting to own a forest and do something. So I thought that, oh, okay, maybe I can somehow plant this at the forest, you see, as a landmark. Because a banyan tree will call all the spirits. So it would be a very nice entrance. So I said to you, yes. And then I smuggled to Malaysia. Yen Wu, actually, the middle person, drove and <laughs> bring to my... At that time, at this height, yeah? The first time, yeah. So, yeah, then I planted the banyan tree temporary. At that time, I don't have the, the forest yet, the land yet. Only, only my intention. So this is uh, my foster mom uh, uh, garden in Negeri Semilan. I planted there. So still in Juntia pot, yeah, this one. But it's growing very fast, very tall. So and then 20, wait, 2017. Uh, or 2018, Nasri from Malay Heritage Center came, approached me and said that, Sushi, uh, do you want to do something with Malay Heritage Center? At that time, all the somehow my research content dealing with some Malay mythology and that kind of, you know, situation. And I did in 2012, in eh, 2013, Sulaiman Itu Melayu. Uh, Sulaiman was Malay, also dealing with a lot of this kind of uh, scenario. So I said yes, and then at that time, I already have the idea to transfer back this thing there. Because I think Banya need to be reactivated in terms of the energy of Banya. Like, I know that in Singapore, you don't have that ritual anymore. In Bali, they still have, you see, in, mostly in Indonesia, they still have a ritual that can somehow reactivate Banyan to become the, the source of some spiritual, how to say, uh, mm -mm, to help them to manifest something, you see. So I said, okay, let's do this. You know, I proposed to Nasri, and before that, Shabi Mustafa, uh, somehow asked me to do something with Rutanda, the library. So I remember I proposed a sculpture of Banyan, Banyan tree inside Rutanda, you see, that kind of thing. So I, I composed both and then at the same time, I, with my daughter, I always tell stories about Kanchil and the adventure of Kanchil. I created myself, you know, that kind of thing. So that's how things happen. So this is, uh, so I, I will show you a few pictures. This is how they first uh, unearth the banyan because the banyan already grew next to the like iron, iron uh, fence. So it's a bit difficult at this time. So this is the first time unearth. Bring to uh, a nursery in Moa. Here. So you see, John, your pot there, still there. For me, everything like, oh, very odd, very. And, and I, I like, you see, for, for me, this is something that, oh, this is odd, you see. <laughs> but I never announce or some, some, something like put on Instagram. I, I don't have social media. So it's only my own. Uh, observation and relationship, how I want to call things art or not art, you know, I always like in between. So this is always about my process. So this is uh, in Malay Heritage Center. It was there from 2019 right up until 2022. Then we unearthed again by IT Meng people, Mr. Sia and Mr. Lin. So, they make it also so beautiful, you see? So, they unearth. The process actually a bit um, 
intense, yeah, to see whether the tree alive or not alive, you know, kind of thing. I always love how they put up the tree, you know, on earth, like, oh, like magical, you know, like, ooh, like that. So this is in IT Meng. So we transfer there temporarily before, eh, actually, I forgot to inform you, 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 <laughs> you, you, you call me or something, right? You texted me. So in between, um, the the work was commissioned by uh, at MHC, the Malay Heritage Centre, and uh, this was during the pandemic, which made it actually quite difficult to complete the work. Yes. So the work, um, so she was mentioning uh, in the rotunda, there was this idea of a sculpture. So she was also thinking about banyan tree in a sculptural abstracted form. And that was a component that was supposed to accompany this work at MHC. However, with the pandemic, everything kind of slowed down and that could not be completed. But MHC um, also is undergoing redevelopment. Yes. So as of end of last year, they have you would have seen their grounds, they have shut their doors, they have hoarded up their space. So there was also a need to... Um, to relocate the, the the whole project. And at that time, we were thinking about the Biennale. Uh, and interestingly, another... This is another, coincident. Yeah, I think you're not doing Biennale. Yeah, and, and very serendipitously, I we were going through some books in our library and I um, there was a particular book we had multiple copies of, which is Sushi's catalogue. And I was just staring at the book and I took it home and I was thinking, I should call Sushi one of these days. Yeah. And then I get an email from Malay Heritage Centre saying Sushi asked them to contact me to tell me that they are going through a redevelopment and Sushi wants to think about what to do with this. Mm. Mm. So before I replied to Malay Heritage Centre, I just then, then I called you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Very, very strange um, how things happen naturally. Uh, for me, of course not coincident, but it's nice to see the the journey, yeah. And then, yeah. So, so this is what you. What, so, what you're seeing is um, the project moving from Malay Heritage Centre into the Biennale, yeah. and we were looking for a site to put it, which we'll show you in a bit. Um, although what you're seeing now is having found a site, we were the whole process of even uprooting the tree again yeah. to bring it um, was a very complicated affair. And then um, Annabelle came. Oh remember? yeah, no, yeah. Then, then along the way, <laughs> this is getting I a very know strange how convoluted. Annabelle actually, so, my coordinator for Singapore Biennale. Yes. So before I even approached Sushi, we had started Biennale project. Annabelle became part of the Singapore Biennale project, and it was the first time I met Annabelle too at that time. Um, then we spoke about this thing, and we, th which brings us all the way back to twenty. 14. Can I jump everyone back to 2014 yeah, 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 for a yeah. second? Okay, yeah. so how I even got the tree. Um, in 2014, the substation had a fundraiser. It was called Save the Substation. And I actually, caught, I did take down, you know, the, the um, what they had put up then. So this, the project was that um, the substation was looking to raise funds um, in 2014. And they made this really lovely project where you could donate different amounts of money. So, for example, for $12, um, you can get um, a yellow gingerbread man. Um, for $20, you get some stickers. Um, for $50, you get a Sepfest 2014 tote bag. And for $100, you will get a banyan tree cutting. So, the banyan tree um, cutting, well, I thought was interesting for me at that time. So, there were five of them, and I went and adopted one, right? So, that's how I got the tree. Still on 2014, and now we go back a little before then. This is where Annabelle comes in, in this convoluted story. Annabelle actually is the person who made the cuttings, which we did not know about until we already were halfway in the project. Annabelle was already, you know, somehow the first time I told Annabelle, who was the project manager working with me for the Biennale, that we wanted to move a tree and the tree was um, with sushi and the tree was substation and then she, her eyes just lit up. Then after that, she told us her backstory that she was like, she's actually responsible for the cutting. So now Annabelle, do you want to talk a bit? About yeah. You you made you made another cutting after that. Yeah, but Annabelle, oh, you had a picture of the cutting too. I have a picture too of it. Ah, this one. This one. I have a picture of the 
substation with the cutting. Oh. Yeah, the first cutting. Oh, this one, this yeah. one. But this is your cuttings also. Annabelle. Annabelle's cuttings. Okay, um, <laughs> I should not just take the credit all by myself. Actually, the cuttings are, were made by my substation colleagues who are actually very dear friends of mine. And I was just basically taking care of the saplings. And we were working with a boris and they said that pinyan trees have really long, long roots. It actually went all the way to SMU. And I just thought it was quite interesting to be part of the project. The long roots actually kind of like a full circle to be part of this project, which I'm very really privileged to be part of it. And it's just somehow three of us are involved in the different stages of this banyan tree. Yeah, the same, the same banyan, yeah? Yeah, and the hmm. same banyan. So, hmm. yeah, yeah, it's really strange. He also, oh, Robert. Oh, let's... Yeah, and Robert, who's sitting right next to me, is also an artist who also deal with the yeah. banyan tree. So, you yeah. Say um, about... you, you had the sh in 2014, you had the show, The Tree That Fell. Hmm. Do you want to... If you don't mind, this is impromptu. We've decided that you are part of the presentation. You can share a bit about what happened with this that project. This is my first project. time meeting, meeting him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the, the tree summoned yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, so, if you look at the image on the top right, yeah. the, that's the image. Uh, basically, that was the tree coming down, and I was there with uh, Tang Pin Pin uh, documenting the tree. Um, it was a huge tree behind the substation. Uh, and then we were preparing an exhibition for Sep 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 Fest. Fest. Yeah. But so, 2015, your show was in 2015. Yeah, so, so hmm. Annabelle approached. And it was just nice when we were discussing, then they said, oh, the tree is fine. And then we just, well, I didn't know what I was going to do, I just, just went to document it and I kept some of the, the parts. parts. Yeah, in the tent at the substation. I don't know what I was doing. Just keeping it there and then. Um, yeah, so it was it was such a big tree and uh, everything in it was huge. Mm -hmm. And to sing, see them bring the huge tree down and to uproot it. Um, and then eventually, I, I think the, it's, it's back at SMU now, actually, the mother tree. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah they, 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 so we went to a nursery in Liu um, I went there to, it was there for a while and then after that, I think, Ping Ping, they, Ping Ping found out that they moved it back to SMU and now it's, but of course now in SMU it's in a kind of a, um, how do you say, um, tame stage, you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it's not able to, you know, have the, the roots coming mm. out, you know, it cannot do its thing. It's like uh, another tame tree. Yeah. Mm. But maybe, maybe I can just add there. So what Robert did in 2015 was that, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. basically there was these pieces of wood which he then hand, using sandpaper, um, broke down those, the, the, the pieces of wood to produce what, what was 150 kilos of sawdust, mm -hmm. which he presented as part of an exhibition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is, okay, so that's the backstory. Now we're back to today. <laughs> This is the thing that I'm waiting for, you see, as an artist to, to observe, especially when I decided to really play with Banyan, I know that I will encounter many alignments, see? So I, I think after my first uh, solo in Gilman Barra, 20... 13, Sulaiman was Malay. Um, I really want to, how to say, uh, uh, experience myself to encounter all these um, unseen uh, energy so that I can translate uh, translate through my, my, my art. But I don't want to be just uh, putting some statements or other thing, but I also want to experience the, the unseen. So Banyan actually, I know the more, the deeper I will go, the deeper the connection, the transmit and uh, tran transmitting and receiving kind of, you know, back and forth, 
I will encounter more and more um, the internal technology, that kind of situation, which I really adore and I really want to learn all this uh, situation. So every artwork actually is a kind of my uh, master uh, master thesis. I I I I I, <laughs> I somehow very not to say against, but I uh, really uh, <laughs> I work with scholar now, but we always argue about how academician uh, module of learning and educating themselves. So I want to have my own options and module understanding uh, knowledge, especially the Southeast Asia kind of uh, uh, situation. Uh, that's why also I came up with this uh, uh, sub subject like hukum petanda and also tingkah laku asal. Okay, can you talk about? Can you talk? No, no, no. <laughs> In English, in English. Hukum petanda and tingkah laku asal. Tingkah laku asal, I call it in, in indigenous attitude? Uh, uh, I don't know. Hukum petanda. <laughs> it's your thing. But scholar can describe well, you see. I sometimes, I like people to experience. So normally, I like to work in a bigger team because everybody must experience their own uh, experience. Like now with the Banyan, with June, with Robert, with Annabelle, and everybody is connect, connected to each other. So the, my artwork, normally I like this kind of situation, how a certain um, subject can somehow create multiple interpretation through others. So maybe here I can introduce Ida also. So Ida is a scholar, researcher, PhD candidate who has been working very closely with Shushi. Um, and I, I think this maybe this portion also can extend uh, in a couple of ways. Uh, maybe either you can fill in also based on your research because that's where you found the connection with uh, Sushi, right? Firstly, um, in terms of Sushi's interest in, in trees, but native trees in particular and their meanings and that connects with some of the research you're doing. Um, so maybe we could talk a bit about that, but then that's also connected to um, knowledges, right? So uh, indigenous knowledges, native knowledges. Um, yeah, so maybe I don't know whether you want to, which direction you want to take it, a bit more on the, uh, on the aspects of its botanical areas and also then the, the mythological, the histories of the knowledges that uh, arrive, uh, are derived from it. Where do I start? <laughs> well, Shushi is like opening a Pandora's box of an encyclopedia. Yeah. It's a lot, which is good. Um, she's incredibly thoughtful in many ways. I think what I was very attracted when I started working with Shushi and what attracted me to her practice, but also her, her thinking, her, her conceptualization, is the fact that she works with things um, in the sense that it, it acknowledges, accepts, and works with things, and it starts with trees. And what I like is how cosmologies, mythologies, the way they, they operate, it's not as, an, as a gateway towards the natural world. It's really the opposite. It's how do we acknowledge, understand the natural world, and um, so far she's primarily worked with trees, but not only, and then manifest socialities of different sorts, meaning human, non-human, and how these then translate into ways of being together as humans. Um, yeah. 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 And, and yeah. Hukum Patanda. I think Hukum Patanda is, um, and what I just mentioned is, Hukum Patanda, you will know better than I do, it translates into the law of science, kind of. So, what Shushi does extraordinarily well is to really pay attention to what signs are around her, to what, and, and we can get into semiotics as a scholar, it's a, it's a very thorny topic. But before getting there, how do we take signs around us from the natural world? How do we take them as communication? How do we take them to be part of our world and inform our own human worlds? Which uh, I hope many of you will concur with me, are incredibly limited in the way they are, especially nowadays. 
um, then is a way of acknowledging this so much more beyond our own human worlds, beyond our own needs, and to, to really give in, accept, and kind of like follow, really, um, meanings around us, systems of communications around us, ways of being around us that can actually contribute more to the human than we can, vice versa. Maybe this is also a good time to kind of talk about another aspect of this larger project, um, which is the, um, the storybook. So when you want to get to that yet, or you mm, wanted to again, I slowly actually, ease? I forgot to bring the the book. Did you bring the book? It's like a taxi. I was like <laughs> February. <laughs> so okay. maybe yes. Okay, but we can talk about the book first, and maybe you can share a bit about it. So um, I mean, one of the elements that was part of the MHC project was already the storybook. Right, as you mentioned earlier, you know, these are stories that you've been telling your daughter, stories that uh, your father also had told you. So I, I remember quite clearly in our conversations, you were describing how important it was for you um, that your father is such an amazing storyteller. You know, he can tell a story, start a story, the characters will continue, and basically it becomes like an epic. You know, but an epic that then moves and changes and has this very creative, expressive element that your father was um, very had this amazing ability to generate, you know, he was a storyteller. Um, and how you then are hoping to do the same. And that's where this, uh, this project with the country also comes with a story. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you can talk about that. Kanchil as mediator for a bird called Burbud, a greater, uh, what? Uh, Kokol Kukul bird. Yeah, Kukul. 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 which for we're, 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 they use yeah. they use this bird, the baby bird. They will break the the leg, and then the mother will repair the leg. So every three Fridays, after finish the number three Friday, they will take the baby and then they will boil to make oil. Oh, yeah. So it's it's like a an oil which can heal. You can, the lake, yeah, you can find it now still. It's available oh, yes. online. Okay. <laughs> so um, the idea is for this book book to find mediator, Kanchil, so that Kanchil will talk to the, the higher powers. The higher yeah. powers. Yeah. But Kanchil also need the another fine mediator, Banyan, to help to go up, you see. So and Kanchil have um Four good friends, porcupine, um, tortoise, a frog, and okay, porcupine, tortoise, frog. Okay, one more. What is? So so they 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 their journey, their adventure together to find the perfect banyan tree. So while while doing, I mean. This, this project, I was basically in Malimau, Malacca. So I was away with my daughter. So my daughter normally would call me and she will ask me, uh, where is Kanchil? So I will make another sound. I say, ah, oh, this is Kanchil. Oh, can you call uh, Tortoise? Then I will, another sound, you see, while driving, while doing things. So <clears throat> it become similar, like my father, you know, it become a, a, a kind of like story between uh, daughter and mother or daughter and father. So for me, I want to be able also to be like my father, you see, to create um, a story for, for children. So this is how things happen. And uh, recently, when I try to compose everything and try to print, suddenly my daughter said, Hey, you tell me that all oh, this this world, the country is doesn't exist. So she she really believed that the country exists, you see? And the thought is so she a bit disappointed. Why you lie to me? <laughs> because she really thought the voice, all the voices, it's really I with the country or with the thought is, you know, doing the translating. So it's interesting where last time my father would call me and my friend every Friday so that he will tell stories and my late mom will cook something. But this time, in the car, 
I will, she will call me and I will tell the story, you know, with different. So, you see, it's interesting how I observe um, the contemporary situation and also the past, you see, how children uh, try also to understand um, how things happen. So, is it real or is it fiction? It's interesting because that time, her age is in, in, in that between, you see. The, the logic and illogic is very interesting to insert something that will somehow engrave uh, through the heart or through the mind. So this is how the, the book uh, yeah, happened. Yeah. I have the, the our notes now here. <laughs> so there, there are four characters. You have the mouse there, which is, which is Kanchil. And the mouse. And what's interesting, I think, is of all these characters is that um, it's also connected to longer myths. In terms of the characters that they have, you know, their abilities and such. So the Kanchil is a smart one, it's a clever one. And that's why the Kanchil becomes the mediator or the way to find the right banyan tree in order to convey the message to the higher powers. There is the porcupine, the Landa, um, who has supernatural powers. Um, maybe, I don't know if you want to expand on what supernatural powers it has. Um, there were the what? The tajam it, thing. Uh, it's spikes. got the spikes. The spikes. Yeah, the spikes have... They have uh, the spike, they have in the center the black one, uh, the, the black one. So the black one actually the poison. So if the porcupine to, to if somehow uh, it, it pierces, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. reach yes. to the black, you yeah. will die, something yeah. like that. So it's got it's, it's got um abilities to, yeah, and to protect the unseen. Uh, mm. the, 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 the porcupine, it's about. Uh, killing, ah, killing the 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 bat, uh, unseen right. things. things. Yeah. So, so natural, uh, what's visible and what's not visible, yes, it's yes, able yeah. to uh, overpower that. There's also the tortoise, the kura kura. This is a secret keeper. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, and then the toad puru, which is a dream interpreter. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are the friends of Kanchil in the story. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I I really always amazed how Malays put Kanchil as animal that very intelligent because very small the most wiser animal in the jungle is kanchil very small very huh? very gentle very very gentle so i interpret it as the malay always pick up um, i mean the ancient malays always pick up um, something that very humble to, to show humbleness is the is the power of everything you see? So this is how I also understand when my father also uh, told me the stories. So I also want to also inform my daughter, you see? Because my daughter with Minecraft, with everything. So Kanchil, <laughs> a little bit like, are you sure? Are you sure? Like, so, so is it relate or not relate? That's why my jungle, the one that I bought, so I always took her to go inside the jungle. So she knows that inside the jungle, everything dark and spooky, you know, it's not something fun. So, but again, this book, the problem with this book, I get carried away because the Malay that I produce, I think not suitable for children because it's very hard. It's very poetic, it's very layers after layers. So I decided to have insert. So the insert will be more simpler, Malay and English, so that they can somehow pick up the visuals. I, I did some visuals, um, yeah. So I, I hope the children will enjoy. Um, hmm. So hmm, maybe on the 21st February, yeah, we will have <laughs> that storytelling session. Yeah. Yeah, so um, what has happened then with the tree, with the whole project right now is that it has um, moved to Lazarus Island. Um, so we were we were looking for a space for the project. Um, this is neat. the process. Yeah, yeah, this is the very exciting process. Mm -hmm. um, again, yeah. costly and and interesting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank, thanks to our partners also yeah. uh, to, for helping us so, to do this. Again, yeah. you see, I like all this unearth the banyan. You give a like a special. That kind of ooh, like that, a feeling um, <laughs> spiritually, that kind of thing. So yeah. So where it's located is actually on Lazarus Island. Um, across from here is the Saint John's uh, jetty, 
And so you can go and visit it. I think we have some pictures also of what it is now. Yeah. So that that is the um, banyan tree with the ah. sculpture and and interesting uh, one. Quick. Yeah. Ah. Which part? Malay Heritage with Malay Heritage Center, the banyan choose to be with the kanji, without the sculpture. This time we have the, the sculpture without the kanji. Yeah, yeah. The sculpture without the kanji. I the kanji how to say <laughs> have many problems and I produced the kanji before. But this time a lot of hiccup, like broken legs and some other other things, you see? So I still in the process of the broken legs might be significant after the boot boot burn. Yeah. Maybe it's connected. You always have a problem with the broken broken legs. Because the legs are very tiny. I don't know why. The first during Malay Heritage Center, that never happened, yeah? So this time so this is the thing that I, I really enjoy. Of course for June it's a bit stress because I think June and the team, hey, why? Why? What happened to your country? When is it? And so as artists, I cannot like, hey June, I like this this you know alignment, is it? But of course they have deadlines, like March, Singapore Benali will be gone. So I have to 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 put the country to complete the thing. I'm doing it, uh, it will happen. So Yeah, so the schedule now is for in first week of February. Yeah, so do do come in. Check out the tree then, <laughs> and you'll know how far we have gone. Seriously, I tell you, I I couldn't believe what happened with the country. So yeah, yeah, but no. I mean, it, it yeah. it's like an adventure, you know, just like the story. Um, the even the country are part kind of, of the adventure. Sometimes. Yeah, but yeah, stressful. Kind okay. Of. Yeah, Lazarus Island actually Sikijang, yeah. Sikijang it's a it's a deer also, the the mini. So everything like ting 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 ting. So um of course me and my team I try also to inspire June to understand about Huko Petanda and Annabelle. Annabelle the one who very stressful, yeah, because she said, Oh so she and man, man. Where's man? <laughs> like can I see the kanchil? Can we go to the factory? You know, that kind of thing. So you, normally, when I produce something, nobody was interested to come to see. They, they only, okay, ready? Okay, pick up. Hello France already in front of the factory. Then when they want to pick up, broken leg. Tick, 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 tick. Oh. Then we cancel. Then of course, very stressful because we have deadlines because when we order the barge to go to the island, it's very costly. So the kanji is heavy, made of cement. So we have to together, uh, you know. So now I think uh, we will use a smaller boat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be because so we, we use a pretty bar large barge to bring the tree over. That was necessary because we also brought a crane. And then we could only get the barge to the island when there was high tide. And so that was dependent on forces beyond ourselves, which is actually quite interesting. I mean, when we talk about the Kanchil story, you know, these uh, mm. and, and um, I guess the signs, right? Hukum Patanda. Um, yeah, all of these need to somehow be aligned, including the tides, mm. in order for this to even happen. Yeah, I also, well, now I, I will work together with uh, three uh, curators, uh, Sam under fellowship, Shahida, Selin, and Mustafa. So I also try to inform them about the sign. So I, I don't know because everybody very um, strongly uh, Western education. So uh, I hope, I hope uh, they won't get so disappointed with, uh, I'm not finding excuses or give reasoning if thing does not happen in more like natural way but uh, of course going towards that kind of uh, direction like what I also did now I have a few projects this year will be my um, ultimate year with Japan project like nine years I was there understanding also how the similarity between uh, 
the Malaysian elements with the Japanese. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I had this uh, huge project of house, abandoned shrine, and then now abandoned apartment. So yeah, Haruka is here. So Tommy Okoyama people, I think, also a bit tired with me. Very bigger project, getting bigger and bigger. So at first, one house in Japan. Then abandoned shrine, another space. Then now apartment, yeah. And then my higang banas. So along the way, I always try to explain to them, hey, this is uh, the sign, the alignment of things. So they say, okay, 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 we will help you, we will help you. Uh, but again, um, please, a little bit more, you will understand the whole uh, scenario. So with Shahida, Mustafa and Selim, the project will start this year, right? So I hope you will enjoy the ride. So, uh, yeah, we, 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 will, we want to try to co compose. Uh, like, for example, when Ruang Rupa got documenta last time, I was in Jakarta, in the hotel room. <laughs> In my, for Machan project. So I texted Mustafa, hey, the gate already open. So she said, hey, oh, hey, very, very true. I mean, Ram Rupa will open the gate. So everybody will, of course, will come here to understand more because for, for the German especially, to understand Southeast Asia, chaos, fluid kind of situation, uh, it's something that for me opened the gate. So when Ruang Rupa opened the gate, I said to Mustafa, hey, we here, we should have all this knowledge with us so that when people come, so they, they understand how we see things from here, how we translate things from here. Normally, outside, translate for us, then they will tell us, ah, you are this, you are this, you are this. I remember one time they want to... Um, address me as neo-conceptualist. Ooh, I say, <laughs> maybe not. I, I don't know what the, the meaning, you see. But again, this is the thing that we should somehow work together how to come up with this kind of, you know, our own interpretation about our own area, our own landscape, our own history, our own myth, you know, with this kind of thing. But for me, I want to observe, like Banyan, it's a big, huge mythology in Southeast Asia. Of course, I want to experiment with Banyan. So thank you so much for June and Robert and Annabelle, whoever related to this particular Banyan. I think this Banyan is super, super choosy because I think she really choose art-related people, you know, art event, art-related people, don't, don't you think? Because seriously, everything falls into art kind of people or I don't know. So I hope it becomes a very significant artwork for everybody. Not, not for me because this is definitely not only my, how to say, intention. I think this is everybody's intention connect to this. So this is our art, Banyan. <laughs> I don't know. So I hope that this work can finish before March. So please <laughs> pray for me <laughs> to align so the Banyan will, will choose yeah, this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, thanks. Um, as you can see, the project with the Banyan tree has quite consumed us and apparently consumed us over a period of time uh, that goes even beyond and before the Biennale itself, which is quite interesting. Um, but I also then maybe want to open up for any questions uh, to Sushi. I mean, it's been a bit of a convoluted journey that we've tried to represent here. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Um, but also to think um, in relation to Sushi's practice, which is um, really interesting in um, trying to find ways in which, from a contemporary perspective and from an aesthetic perspective, to think through um, the conditions of our knowledge, to think through the conditions of our culture. Um, and I'm, so my first question, perhaps, also Sushi, extending from what you were describing about knowledge of Banyan and you know, the, 
uh, other projects that you're doing in, in Japan, you know, exploring the other routes, right, and other knowledges of Malays in Japan is um, what else you are doing in Malaysia right now, which has to do with um, native knowledges. So I don't know, just very yeah. briefly, because yeah. I want to connect this, not just to talk about the Banyan tree as if it was a standalone, you know, something that has caught our attention right now, which it has, but that this is part of a longer journey um, for yourself. Yeah, because I think the problem with me, um, I have a lot of ideas. So sometimes when I was in one situation, things came out. So I said, oh, I want to do this. You see? But things came out in a very beautiful manner which connect to other things. For example, I work now with Orang Asli. We build school, but school not for us to teach them, but them to teach us. So uh, I have this uh, community called Maex. Uh, Malaysian artist intention experiment. <laughs> so whoever young artist with intention, they can share with me and I try to experiment together with them. So this is the idea of the, 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 the thing. So there is one thing uh, with uh, Orang Asli because I think when we purchased the forest, we didn't realize that the forest have tigers, have other things, you see? So, and then the tigers have two types. One is the real tiger, another one is the spirit tiger. This is no joke, huh? this is something that happened and somehow I experienced this thing. If the guardian tiger is huge and he can speak to our the, the leader of our Orang Asli recently yeah, when, when, when she came, so the tiger like 100 meters. So, so this, this, this kind of journey. Real tiger. <laughs> so, this, this, uh, when, when you have forest, you, you cannot, as an urban person, you cannot somehow go inside and hello, you know, animals or trees. You need a teacher. So, the best teacher will be the forest people. The best teacher will be Orang Asli. So, it happened that the forest in Para, so we go to the near Orang Asli settlement in Sungai Siput. So, but Orang Asli, you need to build trust. You cannot simply enter there. You need permission from the authority. So what we did, uh, one of our architect friends uh, got some paperwork, submitted to Jakwa, and then they gave us, uh, us permission. And then, of course, I always know budget. So I informed Japan, can you sponsor a little bit? One house, you know, let's experience together. So what we did with my architect friend's uh, proposal, we want to learn how to build uh, their rumah sewang, you know, the community hall. So my idea is for my architect friends, the young one, to experience not only to design, yeah? as architect you always design things, but you don't, know, you don't understand the whole ecosystem and uh, the whole thing. So what we did, we go up uh, to the mountain area, choose the tree, cut down, cut down ourselves and carry ourselves, bring down and then build. And then all the name of the trees, we jot down. And then after that, the second piece, we will plant back this in one plot of area, which already located where, but now we have wild elephant situation. So we, we can't really go to, to that, that plot. So this is the, and then I also have, um, Makna, the Labu Sayong, the pottery lady. Uh, Malaysia only left one uh, pot potter that can do the uh, by hand manually. So my artwork usually in Malaysia, not 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 artwork. Yeah, my <laughs> contribution in Malaysia always dealing with uh, community, the real community, which happened coincidentally. Some project came in, you know, so some person asked help, you know, that kind of thing. So I all I really literally wait for the petanda. Literally. Then I move and I move and I do and I do. But in bigger scope, it's all related. Fantastically, if I see, I do the mind map, it's all related. 
So it's really beautiful journey for, for me. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing all of this. So this is how you get a, a better sense of the, the breadth and the depth of uh, Sushi's research. And that's what's um, really uh, behind you know, her practice and what she's been producing project-wise. But this is also something that we were very keen on um, discovering um, in Natasha in the Biennale itself also. How, you um, see your practice and how it integrates into your investigations, your daily life, you know, the environment around you, which we wanted to really draw our audience's attention to. You know, not just look at an artist's work as an end product, but really as a, a project that comes from so many different aspects of their lives, you know, as lived. Yeah. So mm. I think you, you mm. in your I case, agree. you, you really you know, share, share that. That's the reason also when June explained to me uh, about the Biennale, I really enjoy, you know. It's not about the bling bling or the wow factor, but it's about how the artist produce something, you see, the, the journey. Because it's very complex. Uh, it's not easy actually to interpret. And I'm very lucky now I also involved with fellowship, which they will go more right in front of me and mm -hmm. discover things which I think my first time and with this age, <laughs> I'm already old, so I really think that knowledge is very important and to produce knowledge also, um, but knowledge need to be used. That's my first, uh, uh, how to say, uh, intention. That for example, whatever I produce, I want those things to be able uh, for other people to use. So I work also with Ida, Ida interested in all my rubber project with rubber trees and other things. She actually a PhD student from Wisconsin um, and anthropology, right? Yep. So I see how, and then I have like long project with Japan. I'm gonna open one public creative center there. I, I hope that I already part of the <laughs> landscape now. Uh, so, I don't know, I just move, but it's getting larger and yeah, but everything is really enjoy. Like going yesterday, I went to the island to swim with my friends and the kids and we swim and swim and swim and then we go back. So when we pass by my work, so I was like, ah, okay, see you. So we don't really like, oh, this is artwork. No, we really like enjoy the swimming because I think the Sikijang Pelempah also very very beautiful island very beautiful island I hope the Banyan happy I hope Robert I give justice to the Banyan <laughs> so I just yeah maybe next I don't know who will take the charge you know of the Banyan yeah so any question anybody ah yes yeah. thank you Thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, so I was wondering, like, um, how did your interest start in the first place? Like, you know, like connecting indigenous or native knowledge with the art. So how, how did you start your journey on this? Uh, yeah, maybe you want to talk about your your own history then, My or, history? or you know, or how you want to connect them to indigenous. I when I was in college, uh, doing my uh, not the uh, yeah degree in art. <laughs> with uh, UITM. Ma, during my final year, uh, na I never wanted to become an artist. I want to become a business person, you know? I want to sell art, you know, that kind of thing. But it, it did not happen that way. Uh, happened that uh, before I graduated, I submitted one artwork uh, to Young Contemporary Award. Ha and then I got first prize, yeah? Never before for Young Contemporary Award, uh, Contemporary Award Malaysia, people who don't have background, like fresh from graduates. Because at that time, uh, how they judge uh, the Contemporary Award, you submitted your work, real work, not slide or presentation, no. The real work. So the judges judge the real artwork. So the visual. So they, they don't want to see the, how to say, the history of the artist or the experience of the artist. I got major award. It's so controversy. Everybody said that, hey, she just, you know, 
uh, not graduate yet, you see, that kind of thing. Then af after that, that one is 1997. Then, then after I won the major award, then 1998, suddenly I have to go abroad. I got Japan Foundation uh, residency. And also I'm the youngest. Uh, Arcus project in Moria. So I think the journey, I, I, I don't choose, I, I, I think. <laughs> that is my experience. Like I bump into, same with Documenta, they're not supposed to select any Malaysian artist. So the creator came to Malaysia just for sightseeing and to meet up with some art related people. But no intention to select any of the artists. At that time, she came for Documenta magazine. Then happened that my friend who drove the curator passed by my house and said, Hey, there's one artist live here. You want to come to, to see her? And then the documenta creator said, Oh, okay. Then I don't know how things happen. I show her two of my books, which I produced during my final year. And she said, Never before documenta verbally invited someone. Usually they, she would go back and discuss with the curatorial team. And I couldn't believe also. I remember I before know WhatsApp, eh, you have to email. Because I worried she took back my books to all my diary. I'm not worried going to document or whatever, but I'm worried that she will take my book. So I emailed her, when did you return the book to me? So she said to me, hey, you're coming here for document. <laughs> so things happen that way in, in my 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 situation. I, I, I don't know how. Orang Asli also is the same. We bought the... I have the intention. First, I have intention. Then things tuk, 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 come to me. Uh, same like there's one house in Japan. When first I came to Onomichi, I saw one very small like little hut yeah, house. That one is 2013 with big sakura. Oh, by, by the roadside. I said, oh, I love this space. Suddenly, 2017, I got the space for free. So this is the thing that I, I am trying to, I don't know, to come up with knowledge or what, but I experience, then I will tell you that the alignment of this sign is really happened. So you just need to reactivate something because humans have many things that you can transmit and receive with your surrounding. We are blocked by, by our anxiety with material world, you see. It's a kind of like open, openness, right, to, to what's happening also, you know. Being yeah. open, you kind of see when these things come, are already there, existing for you. And, and Every, uh, yeah. yeah, for me, like for example, plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course you like plants, but you need to have experience to plant something. Then suddenly the plant die, for example. And then you must have the experience also to really see how things die. So this is, I think, the practice of, for me, I call it indigenous attitude, that you, you, you reconnect. Because I think during COVID, I really realized that the anxiety problem is how, why, the, the reason why human does not connect anymore with the, the, the nature and, and the cosmos kind of uh, energy. This is really strongly somehow uh, this internal technology actually during our ancient time, any anyone, I mean uh, Japanese or Chinese or Indian, they have this very strong uh, internal uh, technology that they can connect everything. And they don't have such anxiety problem like us. So this is how I said to Aida, let's compose this knowledge because she's a scholar, I'm not. So I have this experience. How to translate this so that people can have these options to help somehow to reduce anxiety. Seriously, during COVID, during the lockdown, I myself have a huge anxiety problem until I got sick. So not by COVID, but by, by anxiety because I live in a condo, so I... I, I I only see nature down there, so I, I like, uh, uh, so it's really horrible situation. So I hope um, 
whatever knowledge that me and few friends and whoever that connected uh, can somehow help something. Not not only art, yeah, because we are we are hum human being. Art is a kind of mediator to reach to the most uh, how to say beautiful things in, in in life. So for me, that interpretation might help uh, our journey, everybody's journey. Yeah. Am I answer you? I don't think so. Oh, thank you. Anyone else has questions? Any? Anyone? Ah? No. Really? She does? She tried your One? question. No. You want to ask me or Auntie Jun? Maybe later. I'm a bit shy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Did you want to add some more on the project at this time? Uh, yeah. Maybe. Uh, I mean, let's work together, either with nursery guy, uh, Mr. Sia or Mr. Lin. They are really amazing. Yeah. They are not art people, but I think we are human. We. I mean, art, art, art related people somehow very sensitive with, with uh, plants and other things. And we have that common thing. I think first time I met Mrs. Sia and then uh, you, is it? Asked me, you can? You can with him? You can? I said, <laughs> kau, kau tim. I said, <laughs> so it's very, because when you meet someone, you will feel the someone's energy, whether you can work or not with that particular someone. Especially with with me, uh, when I want to produce work, I, I I really need this particular energy to work. If I, I somehow I work with a very difficult person, I will somehow try many kind of module to reach to that person. Uh, usually, I won't dismiss, so I will try. That is my method, trying to engage with with. Um, Human, human level, so that we can understand more. <laughs> yes, do you please stop? You know, Hannah. Okay, so um, yeah, I, I guess that kind of wraps up our conversation. I think it's taken a lot of different directions. I hope some of the directions have been interesting for you, whether it was in relation to um, the facts of the the process itself, or in relation to Sushi's larger practice, which um, it's really um, quite interesting and, and precious in terms of how you see the world, how you investigate the world, and um, yeah, so um, perhaps at this point, we'll just encourage you, if you're able to, to drop by uh, Lazarus Island, go say hello to the tree. Um, and hopefully in February, we will also have the mouse deer there. So um, yeah, go go and visit it then. Um, so when wise, June and uh, Annabelle <laughs> text me, always <laughs> finger cross, finger cross. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we've been, yeah. we're, we're all hoping, we're all having the intention. Yes. Yes, of the, the conchils uh, being there. Let's experiment yes. our intention. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very thank much, you so much everyone for thank being here. So